Okay guys, so I originally had planned to do separate reviews for Drag You and The Glass House, which just premiered tonight on Monday, June 18th, but I'm a little bit lazy and I've got a touch of ADHD, so I just decided to just do them all together. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be a, kind of a weird blog, but just bear with me. To tell you how ADHD I am, I actually was watching The Glass House on ABC and got bored and just paused it. To go on Twitcam to actually chat with Tyler Oakley. He was having a chat session with like 2,000 of his fans that he was promoting for his YouTube. And while everybody else was sitting there and they were tweeting and saying, Oh, Tyler, Tyler, please notice me. Please mention me on camera. I ended up getting mentioned, not even meaning to, because I was making fun of his Spanish. He was trying to speak Spanish and I just inadvertently just tweeted, you know, that was horrible Spanish, and he reads it on camera, and then tells me to go fuck myself. Yo no habla espanol either. So I guess to get people's attention on Twitter, just go negative. And for those that saw me doing my reviews for RuPaul's Drag Race last season, yeah, I kind of got rid of all of my hair, just whacked it all off. It looked good when I first did it, but it's kind of making my head look shiny now. I don't like it. Hold on a minute. Better! For those of you that last season said that you didn't like the stupid surfer wig, fuck you too. Okay, for those of you that were watching The Glass House, did anybody else notice or get distracted by Apollo's ear? One of the guys, one of the house guests on the show is called Apollo. His name is actually Apollo Poetry. That's what he introduced himself as. And his occupation is writing poetry. Imagine that! Anyway, one of his ears is like really pointy, like Dr. Spock pointy. It's really distracting. Like his other ear looks normal, and I'm totally not going to even edit that footage out because, eh, oh well. Anyway, like I was saying, one of his ears is pointy, and one of them is perfectly normal, and it is very distracting. Whatever camera angle you're looking at him from, it looks entirely different. Like he's transmorphic. It's very different. I mean, I'm not saying that he's not an attractive guy. He actually is an attractive guy. And he seems pretty nice. He will be one of the fan favorites throughout the season, I'm sure. But, um, yeah. His occupation is poetry. So that pretty much means that he's unemployed and really doesn't have a life plans. A direction in life. He believes in law of attraction, though. So, I mean, it's gotten him pretty far. I mean, it's gotten him to a glass house, right? A show on ABC that nobody knows about. Oh well, Apollo may not be a keeper, but speaking of not being a keeper, back over on Drag U. <laughs> shut up. Over on Drag U, Latrice Royale was one of the new professors this season. The very first episode, her very first outfit that she comes out, is this mahogany looking, look like a couch, the same couch outfit that she wore on Drag Race. Definitely would have made Santino Rice throw up. And that hair, ugh, it just, ugh, it looked horrible. But Manila Luzon, as creative as Manila Luzon is, she still can amaze with the looks that she has. Loved the Ronald McDonald hooker look. It worked. Speaking of a look that does not work, back over in the glass house, speaking of a look that doesn't work, Back over in the glass house, the gay guy that they actually cast for the season. I don't even remember his name. It's like Jonathan, Johnny, Jesse, Jeff, Jeffrey, maybe? I don't know. It was something like that. Anyway, he's this rather large, rotund gay guy that all these reality TV shows, they tend to want to cast the gay person as a Huge, huge stereotype. I mean, he's definitely flaming gay. And they chose him because I'm sure they didn't want the straight guys, who are pretty attractive, to feel any threat from him. 
I mean, this guy was so large that once he jumped into the hot tub, all the water in the hot tub jumped out. And, you know, the, the other house guests kind of had a laugh about it. And I think they just cast this guy mainly to be a joke for the house. And I think that is terrible for the guy. It's terrible for the gay community. And it's terrible for the viewers. Because they're, they're pigeonholing all of these people into these stupid stereotypes. I just wish that these reality TV shows would cast a gay guy that is at least, you know, attractive, muscular, maybe, you know, got six-pack abs. Anyway, another disappointing thing about Drag U was the fact that Sharon Needles wasn't even featured in the first episode of the season. I think she got one graphic on the, this entire episode. She wasn't, she wasn't featured. I hope she's definitely going to be in next, next week's episode. But they also took that cute little segment that they always do on Drag U called A Word from RuPaul, and they turned it into a trivia question. They took it from being cute to being pointless and stupid. And pointless kind of describes the voting over on the glass house. Okay, most people don't even know the show exists. Tonight was the series premiere of the show, and most people didn't even know that you could vote to control the house. But these people have been in the house for a little while, so the viewers, the fans, as the show calls them, who don't know anything about these people yet, were given the option over the past two weeks to be voting on what they would like certain people to do and what they would like certain people to, to see. First of all, they voted two women, the oldest woman and the youngest woman, to be roommates inside a room that they are calling the enemy's room. We know nothing about these people, so we don't know. They could be end up being the best friends, so they're not going to be the enemies. And then this guy, this douchebag from Texas named Alex. Like I said, he is attractive, but he's a douchebag. He asked the fans, again, the fans who don't know him, if they wanted him to be the worst reality TV villain in history. Now, you were only given the option of yes or no. And like I said, most people don't know this show that even exists, so probably, I would say about seven or eight people probably voted. So they voted yes. And this stupid douchebag thinks that this gives him blanche carte to do whatever he wants on the show, and to treat people however he wants because he wants to be the worst reality TV show villain in history and he thinks he's going to get the votes to stay. So to impress America on episode one, Alex decides to dress in a woman's thong, show his penis to a married mother of three, and tell, <laughs> tell her that his penis is probably bigger than her husband's and that he knows she wants it. Then, he decides to go tell the nymphomaniac that she's a hooker. Then, he goes up to the, the blonde bimbo from Texas, who carries around a for real friend's pet cat. You know, with the, you know those little toys that go meow, 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 and make a stupid cat sounds, and they look like real cats. Apparently, she needs this for security reasons, or she's doing it as a dumb prop. I don't know what she's doing it for. She carries this around anyway. He sh he could have actually have went after her for carrying around a toy. But no, he doesn't do that. He goes after her weight. And she's not fat. She's actually a perfect weight. You know, she's not too skinny. She's, she's not big. She's, she's very pretty. But he tells her that she's too fat. That she should stop eating peanut butter of the morning and... You know, she's got, like, a, a tire around her waist. Just completely rude. And he thinks he's going to be allowed back into the house from Limbo. Well, considering that most of America's not even watching this show, and most people won't be voting, I don't even think he's going to be back in the house. Yeah. They're probably going to vote him out. Well, guys, that's probably going to be the most expensive blog I've yet done, because that little tumble that my iPhone took off of the tripod onto the carpet has jacked up my iPhone.
because it's now like 40 minutes since I last did that last segment of this vlog. My iPhone just cut itself off and had to restart. And it took 30 minutes to restart. So, I'm going to close out this vlog with that little bit of information. And I'm going to upload this and... I don't know if I'm actually going to be doing reviews of Drag You and Glass House the rest of the season. Said the first episode of both shows was kind of, kind of blase, but, you know, it can get better, so we'll wait and see. Until next time, bye.